of violence that has been across Iraq since the moment of the U.S. intervention, the U.S. invasion of 2003. The contractors are a huge part of that. The mercenaries include the armed mercenaries, which is about a third to a half of the total number of mercenaries. They include, for example, almost 5,000 of them come from apartheid-era South Africa military forces. These are the people who are being recruited. Soldiers from the Pinochet dictatorship in Chile have been recruited when the Chilean government Phyllis, and the Phyllis, South African government refused to support to refused to support the war in right Iraq now, because of their popular opinion. This is not making stuff up. I just came from South Africa. They're in the, pro in the process of developing. And, and, and There's no novels here. It's real people hoods. dying. These are real people it dying, real people and it's, dying. they're dying at the hands of people who were trained by the South African apartheid-era uh, military who have been around the world working in these, in these mercenary capacities. Iraq is only the most recent. They have a history in other African countries, in Central America, and elsewhere. The same with forces from the Chilean dictatorship. These are the people who are being recruited to act as mercenaries in Iraq. This is an old story, not let, a new let story. Let him answer. Let and, him and, answer. And Phyllis, Go what ahead. you should do is you should uh, lobby then the Iraqi government to change their law. They, the, the, the I lobby the U.S. government. They the have UN. the power. It's their, but, but their members of parliament have service, tried to. Obviously, because the Iraqis want them there. That's why is it then, do it's you think, the Brad, that 70 percent, why do you think 70 percent of the Iraqi parliament just voted again to demand a timetable, something that the U.S. has refused, listening only to Prime Minister Maliki, the, the, who of course the, is kept in power by the United States. The American States. forces are working in conjunction with our coalition partners and with the Iraqi people. Our coalition partners are who exactly? We've, got, we've gone from 70 countries Iraqis. to how many now? About three? Mm -hmm. Let, That's me, a ask very the, logical let point. me ask Brad the following question. By, by law, they were placed under the, outside the realm of uh, legal prosecution. That, uh, that much has been established, Brad. You know, you can pretty much take uh, any GI or even a captain or even a general in the U.S. Army and take them to court, whether uh, in, inside the United States or so, somewhere else. But by same law placed by Paul Bremer, you cannot charge any of those uh, security contractors. So how do you... On the memorandum how, 17... On the Memorandum 17, which, of you, which you speak of, yes, the coalition uh, gave special rights, if you will, to outside contractors Why? To, be responsible for, to, their, to, to be responsible to their host government's rule of law. Because at the time, there was no rule of law in Iraq. You know that. And, and now the there United is States a rule never of law. Has there is a government. And if, and if the Iraqi the government has never thought that these people were not providing a valuable service, they would pass a law and they would be, disappear. They want them there. And the as Iraqis if all those want laws are implemented in Iraq? a service to the people. That brings They're providing me, a service see to you the United States me. military. They are providing a They're service providing to the United States military that the military doesn't military, have the capacity but to, the Iraqi to do for people. itself. I don't know which Iraqi people you're talking to. The Iraqi people that I talk to I'm talking to about the citizens of Iraq. In that case, oh, I, I don't know who you're talking to. In that case, about. Brad, let me ask you the following. The, four, uh, the family of the four lynched people in Fallujah back in 2004, which perhaps contributed tremendously to the upheaval that we are seeing right now, they are seeking justice. They have just sued uh, Blackwater in the American court of law, and it is, you know, it's proceeding. The question is, where do Iraqi people go for seeking justice? They should speak to their government. Uh, yes, our, our uh, security forces were granted special rights initially to be responsible to their own host government, uh, but the Iraqi Which people sh should talk to their, to, their own, to their own government for accountability. But the Iraqi people have no the access line is to that atrocities, government. Hundreds of thousands of atrocities done by the Iraqis to the Iraqi people themselves. Don't single out one event. Yes, there have been no, uh, the incidents on our own side. There's as no much question and as little that. as everyone else. No question about that. But the over, overwhelming atrocities have been by the Iraqis against the Iraqi people, and that's the tragedy. The this Iraqis is a go ahead, Phyllis. No this is a small get, The Iraqis the have no ability to get rid of these. The Iraqis have no ability to get rid of these mercenaries. The contracts are signed with the U.S. <laughs> government and those corporations. The contracts are based on the original law signed by Paul Bremer in 
in Rule 17 that says they will have immunity. That's the basis on which they're there. Their accountability is only to their own corporate headquarters, which is involved in trying their to make a profit for their shareholders. The United States government aren't worth the paper they're written on if the Iraqis themselves don't want us there. They can, they can The Iraqis have no the, power the to challenge the U.S. government. By the stroke of a pen. The stroke Wrong. of whose pen exactly? There have been strokes of many pens in that parliament, none of which have been implemented because it disagrees with what the U.S. has imposed. Phyllis, no, let me you're, ask you're you the following wrong, question. Phyllis. Hold on just, just a minute, Brad. You know, flooding Iraq with these private security contractors, many people think it is nothing but short of an attempt for an exit strategy. Do you buy that argument, Phyllis? No, I don't buy that. This has been part of an effort to impose this war on a privatized basis from the very beginning. This has been part of the strategy of Donald Rumsfeld at the Pentagon to claim that he could go in with a small, lean force, small and lean in terms of military people, but fattened with the number of mercenaries who were designed to be part of this process from the very beginning. This is a false claim that they are there so that the U.S. troops can come out. They've been part of this from the beginning, doing the work that ordinarily, under any other war, the military people themselves would be carrying out. This was part of the strategy. But as the Iraqis stand up, we will stand down. We don't want to be there one day more than <laughs> we have you, to President be there. Bush. And, 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 and uh, because it's the truth. That's the truth, Phil. You don't, you don't <laughs> like the truth. You see a cabal from everything. I wish everything. the truth were you, true, You make Brad. statements that, I are, wish that, it was that, true. Are, that are more Hollywood than reality. And you know that, Phil. You have I'm to not be sure controversial has because to do that's with your shtick. One of the realities talked about President Bush, Brad Blake, Real is the creation of the civilian core. This is something the president has pushed for, and so far it has not come about. Do you think one day we're going to see, in addition to the U.S. Army, there is a civilian core or some, something? Uh, Eric uh, uh, Prince, uh, the, the leader of uh, Blackwater, said, you know, we need to create a contract brigade, some sort of a, a Federal Express uh, uh, army going to these hot zone areas. Our army, the as I said before, US is, is, in, is in a stage of transition. We've transitioned a lot of, of the logistical support, not security, to uh, contractors because they're the best suited to do the type of work of rebuilding and, and establishing uh, utilities and water and the types of things that are essential to life they as you done so prosecute well so a war. Far. And also to feed our troops. They Did haven't you, done so well in providing do water well and electricity first, so far. And I would say that Iraqis are better able to do that than any foreign mercenaries coming into their country. They did it after eventually the last two be. wars. They can do it again. Not eventually. They could do it now. No, they haven't. Only after, after the Saddam we regime, can get out. There, was, there, were, there was no water. There was water for Saddam's palace, but there wasn't Sorry, water. Sorry, I was in, in, in Iraq during Saddam's regime. For, for I don't people. know when you were there. I don't know when you were, you were there, you were Brad. I was there in 1999. Too. I bet no, you're as a matter of fact, gone, I was there Phyllis. with a group. I bet excuse me, gone. excuse me, you are not going to accuse me of that. I was there with a group of U.S. congressional staff to investigate the humanitarian conditions imposed by sanctions. It was during the regime of Saddam Hussein, a regime that our government had armed, we should note, had provided the seed stock for biological weapons. You will not accuse people well, who oppose the sanctions Phyllis, of being in bed with this. Saddam and back. people throughout the now, country now Iraq had water. To the Iraqi people. That's right. And it, it belongs to the Iraqi people and is occupied by the United States military and their mercenaries. If Final the Iraqi question people didn't want you, us there, would be out tomorrow. Final question to you. Can you imagine the credibility deficit, the impact on the U.S. credibility by resorting to security contractors as viewed from this part of the world at minimum? No, I don't, I don't believe that's so at all. I think that in any transformation, there are going to be things that have to be changed and made better for future conditions. But overall, I think our security forces, our contractors that are over there, have been doing wonderful work. And, and some of the incidents that have happened are inexcusable. There's no question about that. But overwhelmingly, they have done a good job. Final word to Phyllis Bennis. Was it worth it to resort to the civilians to do the job? These are not civilians. These are military people that are not accountable to any military justice, as insufficient as military justice is. They are not accountable to anyone. This is now a privatized war. It is no more a just war than it ever was because there are private military contractors or mercenaries involved in this war. 
Phyllis Bennis from the Institute for Policy Studies, thank you. Brad Blakeman, a former senior advisor at the White House, thank you for being on Inside Iraq.